Seventh field artillery stages a battle against Jack Frost. Cavalry also gets a taste of winter maneuvers. The doughty troopers of the first squadron putting their mounts over the snow-clad hills and jumps in a daring display of horsemanship. Rigorous training for winter campaigning. through Cloudland, the Army Air Corps' six flying fortresses return to their base at Langley Field, completing a 12,000-mile trip to Buenos Aires and return via Panama, the west coast of South America, and twice over the Andes. A remarkable flight, both as a goodwill mission to our Latin neighbors and as a demonstration of flying efficiency. Lieutenant Colonel Robert Olds, commander of the flight, gets a hearty welcome from high-ranking Air Corps officers, and the courageous crews of the six great bombers received the commendation of the Secretary of War and the Army's Chief of Staff. The Air Corps shows off its new dress uniforms. This one is the formal full dress for off-duty, and this is the full dress blues for daytime wear and under arms. Next, the formal mess uniform for evening wear that makes a lieutenant glisten like a general. And a major, in his new special formal dress for evening, is to be just about the tops in swankiness. The new styles are all in blue, with gold braid, and will be worn by all flying officers beginning next fall. At ease, gentlemen. Day, the 21st anniversary of America's entry into the World War, and President Roosevelt watches as the pick of the army passes in review before him. Hey, young fella, are you left-handed? That's better. In a world distraught by wars and rumors of wars, America today looks to her national defense. Tanks and planes and guns and marching men, the price of independence and democracy. The Corps of Cadets at the United States Military Academy hold its first outdoor dress parade of the spring. During the season of good weather, these Sunday parades attract thousands of visitors who come to thrill at the precise marching and counter-marching and the colorful ceremonies of the Corps, rated as the world's best drilled military unit. Future Army officers, some of them now in the ranks, destined to be generals. But if they never have anything to do but drill, this country will be just as happy. The graduating class of the Army's first autogyro school is having commencement exercises today with a mass flight of five of the craft. Dean of the school is Lieutenant Colonel Houghton, who sees five pilots and eight mechanics graduate with honors today. When more men are trained and more gyros put into service, they will replace balloons for artillery observation. Like so many beetles, the gyros can hover over one spot, almost motionless. And they can land on a basket of eggs if my eyes don't deceive me. <laughs> Troops of the 33rd Division, the Illinois National Guard, and attached anti-aircraft units turn soldier field into a real soldier's field as they rehearse a gigantic war show to be staged later this month.
curtain raiser for what promises to be the biggest military show ever put on in this country. A complete battle waged right before your eyes. West Point cadets get a few first-hand tips on the mechanics of war at the Army Proving Grounds. The new fast tanks hold plenty of interest for the future generals. That is, until they learn that even a tank can throw cold water on their enthusiasm. Some of the boys will be big guns in the Army someday. crowd of proud parents and friends, 301 of the nation's finest youths get their diplomas from Secretary of War Woodring at the impressive graduation exercises of the United States Military Academy. It's the culmination of four years of rigorous training, and this year, the ranking man of his class is John Robert Janarone of Nutley, New Jersey. Now they have to start climbing all over again as second lieutenants. West Pointers in working clothes get a chance at the infantry school at Fort Benning to try out the machine guns they have learned about in classrooms. Now the 37 millimeter anti-tank guns. The future generals may have plenty of need for these great shooters. West Point cadets meet some of the Army's big guns at Fort Story. Once they get the range, look out. Okay. It's all right, fellows. They're going in the other direction. You're not supposed to jump that way when the big guns go off. You're in the Army now. On your toes this time. Take that man's name! The cavalry school sees an impressive demonstration of the new mechanized cavalry. First, the cavalry's combat cars, tanks to you, show their cross-country ability. artillery shows the assembled officers how quickly the howitzers can go into action. While the new tractor motors, too, open up their loud mouth chorus. Iron horses for the cavalry. Monkey wrenches instead of riding crops. A speedy, powerful new welded armor car is being demonstrated by its inventor, Preston Tucker, racing car designer. The amazing war machine will make 100 miles an hour on roads, but not on these roads. It's designed principally for anti-aircraft work, although it can be used as a tank for ground combat, too. The tires are puncture-proof, but I wonder, how about the crew? Another war scare. But this time, it's a war game for the 66th Infantry, the Army's light tank regiment. the nation's ground defenses certainly would be more secure. It looks like Uncle Sam is sitting up nights, mending his fences and defenses. 